Hi there and welcome to chapter 7.5 from Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. And this, this section is just a little summary and tying up a couple loose ends from chapter 7. So we'll get into that. Let me click into full screen mode. Okay. So here's the idea. It may seem like we've done a lot. You know, we're up to chapter 7.5 already, but we've really only done three things. Um, and here they are. In chapter 7.2, we constructed confidence intervals for a population mean where sigma was known. And we said that's pretty unlikely, but it sort of helped us get started in the, in the task of creating confidence intervals. And when this was the case, we used the z-table. And when this was the case, we could also calculate sample sizes. Right? And then in 7.3, we constructed confidence intervals for a population proportion. And in this case, we used the z-table again. And we were also, in this chapter, able to calculate sample sizes. Right. And when I say calculate sample sizes, I mean how big of a sample do we need to create a confidence interval with a margin of error, with some given maximum margin of error at some given confidence level. And then 7.4. We constructed confidence intervals for population mean where sigma was not known. And we noted that that was the more realistic case because it's not likely that you'll have the population standard deviation. And in this case, we had to change tables. We had to use the t table. Um, here, we did not learn how to calculate the sample size. And that's a little tricky because of the way we use the t statistics and um, its dependence on the sample size. So it's hard to get the critical value of t without having the sample size. And if you're trying to calculate the sample size, it, it can be done. It has to be uh, done numerically with software. Um, so we did not do that in Chapter 7.4. So what I find is that most students can do any one of these tasks fairly easily. Um, but the problem is they don't, know, they don't always know when to do what. what you know, what question asks for what type of procedure? When do I use which table? So that's what this little part is about right here. When to use what. All right, we have two distributions, the z and the t table. So when do we use which ones? So if you're doing a confidence interval about a population proportion, automatically we're using the z distribution, the z table. All right? We do need at least five successes and five failures. And there's also some requirements about um, the samples satisfying the requirements of the binomial distribution. When we're, using, when we're creating confidence intervals about population means, that's where we might use the z, we might use the t. So we use the z distribution when sigma is known. Right? And we also need to know that the population distribution is normal or the sample size is greater than or equal to 30. Or both. Right? And we use the t distribution when sigma is not known. And again, that's going to be more likely the case. All right, so you're going to be using the t distribution unless it is explicitly stated that you know the population standard deviation. And again, with this case, we need the population to be normally distributed or to have a sample size greater than 30. If you have a small sample, less than 30, and the population distribution is not known to be normal, we're out of luck, right? So again, I'm not going to ask you a lot of these questions in the textbook because you can't do them, but it's worth knowing as you leave this class or this course that uh, you, you can't always use the methods presented here. There are situations where um, you have to look it up in a different book or take another class of what to do. So if I have a small sample size, when the population distribution is not known to be normal, we can't use any of the methods. Right? So that option is out there, although it is not emphasized strongly in the problems in the back of the book. Okay, so in this case, this is the your turn. I'm basically asking you, you know, do you use the t table or the z table? All right. So here, these are questions about a population mean. All right, because if it's a question about a population proportion, if I want you to build a population proportion confidence interval, Use the z-table, no questions, right? Well, provided 
n times p and n times q are greater than 5. So in these problems, we're talking about a population mean. Which table do I use? Suppose n is 150. That's good. That's big, big enough. That beats our 30. The sample standard deviation is 3. The population standard deviation is not known. And the population distribution is skewed. So the population distribution being skewed is bad, but my sample size is bigger than 30, so I'm good to go. Um, so I get to choose T or Z, but because sigma is not known, I'm going to use the T distribution. So for number 2, N is 8, that's a small sample, that's very bad. Right? S, the sample standard deviation is 15. I know the population standard deviation is 13. My sample mean is 110.5, but that, that doesn't really play into the question. Just extraneous information there. And the population is normally distributed. So while the sample size is small, 8 is kind of small, the population is normally distributed. So I'm good to go. I have to choose the Z or the T. Now in this case I could either use I could use either one because I have S. But since I have sigma, I might as well use it because that improves my confidence interval. So in this case I'm going to use the Z distribution. But it should be noted that you actually could use the T distribution. It's just less accurate. Okay, what about three here? Our sample size is small. That is bad. And if I skip all over all of this and I go the population distribution is very skewed. I have a small sample and a skewed population distribution. That's the two strikes in your out uh, system. So we can't use either. Right? We don't know how to construct a confidence interval under those circumstances. It can be done, we just haven't learned it. And it's a very um, large confidence interval. That, you know, the accuracy takes a big hit in that example. Um, okay, so I have a sample size of 25. Um, so that's small, so I'm a little worried. But when I look over here, the population is normally distributed, so I'm good to go. I have to figure out whether I'm going to use T or the Z table. S is known. Sigma is not known. All right. So if I don't know sigma, I have to use the T distribution. But I'm good to go. Uh, for number five, my sample size is small. My population is dis distribution is very skewed. So again, I have my two strikes, and I'm out. All right. It doesn't mean it can't be done. It just can't be done with any of the methods we know in this textbook. And there goes my phone, but I'm going to let that ring. Okay, so in practice, a population is considered normal enough if it appears to be symmetric. If you do the distribution, you know, if you graph maybe with a histogram, if you graph the distribution, and it's somewhat symmetric, and you'll actually be doing like a more of a histogram thing. You know, it might not be totally symmetric, but maybe sort of symmetric. It can only have one mode, right? We don't want to bimodal and has no outliers. Like it doesn't have anything sitting out over here. Um, the magic number of 30 is not strict. If the population is approximately normal, you may not need a total of 30. But if it is far from normal, you might need more than 30. Right? So the magic number is just there for generalization purposes. It, it, it's not a, it, nothing drastic changes in going from 29 to 30. It's just a customary benchmark. Uh, a couple loose ends. If you use the wrong table, right, suppose you use the Z instead of the T table. Right, you have the Z table and the T table. All right, if my sample size is large, greater than 30, there won't be much difference if you use the wrong table. Um, for small sample sizes, uh, there can be a big difference. So if you have a small sample size, using the wrong table can be bad. Um, and the reason for large samples that it's okay is that the T distribution starts to look a lot like the Z distribution when the sample size gets big. So um, 
if the sample size is, is big, using the wrong table will throw you off. And, and by the way, when you do problems in the back of the book or on WebAssign, it might be a small difference, but it could easily be enough to get the problem wrong. So keep that in mind. From a practical standpoint, the difference may not be that big. From a answering the question on WebAssign standpoint, it might be big enough to get the, to get the wrong answer. Um, okay, tables versus software. For confidence intervals, using the Z distribution, our table is, is fine, right? If we're using uh, the T distribution, the table is not that great, specifically because if you look at the T distribution, um, you know, we have a lot of the degrees of freedom, but as they get up higher, um, you know, it starts skipping numbers, 80 to 85, 90, 95, and it starts getting larger and larger, and you start skipping over a lot of degrees of freedom. But look, at, at these high values, the Z table is pretty darn close to the same value. So it's not, you know, you're not out of luck using this table. In fact, you can probably do anything you need from a practical standpoint uh, with the content in this book with this table. You don't need software. Um, but... It is a, it's a little better to have software for the T-table than, and you don't really need it if you're using the Z-table. And you can see the stevenstats.com to see how to um, use the Z-table and the T-table for our confidence intervals. It's actually really quite easy. And, and any software package, even if you just ask for the mean, it'll actually often give you uh, a confidence interval or a margin of error. Uh, the mysterious, I introduced the margin of error when calculating population proportions. And I just threw it out there. I, I did not justify it at all. And so if you're interested in the justification for where that margin of error came from, this, this sort of outlines that process. Um, so if you want to pay attention, great. If you want to stop the recording now, that's fine. But, but here's what it's based on. Right? It's really, you know, when you're looking at population proportions, it's based on a binomial distribution. All right? Binomial distribution. And I use a z-table, which is a normal distribution. So basically I'm using a normal distribution to approximate a binomial distribution here, just like we did in chapter 6.5. Um, but there's a few things to remember. Back then in a binomial distribution, the mean was n times p. That's the number of trials, and p was the probability of success. And the standard deviation which I'll denote sigma sub ed p, was the square root of n times p times q. And if I'm working with sample p's and q's, that's approximately equal to n times p hat times q hat. And in fact, this sample mean is approximately equal to... Um, actually, I don't, I don't even need that. So I'm going to estimate my standard deviation with the square root of n times p hat times q hat, just like I did back in chapter 6.5. Or actually, that was 6. Point, uh, yeah, 6.5. Um, okay. And the distribution for the number of successes in n trials is approximately normal. And that's what we did in 6.5. We used the normal approximation to the um, binomial distribution. And that was provided that n times p and n times q are greater than 5. And that was one of the requirements that we needed for calculating confidence intervals. So we're going to use this information, and we're going to derive this margin of error. So if you go back to 7.1 or 7.2, or you could even do 7.4, those were confidence intervals about means, the margin of error looked like or the confidence interval looked like the, mar the, the sample mean minus the margin of error and the sample mean plus the margin of error, right? But in our case, the sample mean is going to be n times p hat, right? The population mean is n times p, but the sample mean is n times p hat. So I replace x bar with n times p hat, and instead of having the margin of error here, I'm going to take my critical value of z times the standard deviation of the binomial distribution. All right, so it's the same critical values of z, 
my standard deviation no longer comes from the distribution of sample means, but it comes from the binomial distribution here where um, sigma is equal to the population or the um, standard deviation of the binomial distribution. It comes, it's this thing right here, right? And so in this next step, going from here, so this step, getting from here to here, use this, right? Getting from here to here, all we're saying is that the standard deviation of the binomial distribution is approximately equal to the square root of n times p hat times q hat. Right? So all I did was substitute that in there. And then going from this step to this step, I've just divided by n. Right? So the n here disappears and shows up here and here. Right? And now I'm doing a little factoring. When I, div when I break this up into these into two separate fractions, I have n times p hat over n, which just becomes p hat. And then I have to do a little simplification here where I take the square root of n times p hat q hat over n, which if I expand that square root to the denominator, I can, but I have to make that an n squared. And so this just becomes square root p hat q hat over n. So that's where this, this comes from. Right? It's just a simplification of the terms. And then notice all I'm doing here, that is my margin of error. Right? That's E. So that's where that margin of error came from. I, I didn't pull it out of nowhere. And the development could be actually certainly a little more thorough than this. But that's the outline of where it comes from. Yikes. <laughs> All right, so that wraps up our summary in loose ends, and it also wraps up Chapter 7, and um, the next video is actually the summary worksheet, and then we'll truly be done with Chapter 7. So, it has been a pleasure having you here, and uh, I'll see you at the summary worksheet. Bye.